Uh, hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, I am very glad that you all have joined our webinar. So Techno Mechanics is bringing you a series of webinars. So this is our first webinar. And now let us move to our today's agenda. So today's agenda includes what Techno Mechanics do, uh, what services of Techno Mechanics, what they do, and then followed by we'll see robotics. So what are the elements of robotics? Why robotics became so much popular in this world? Then we will see the Arduino, that is the basic elements uh, of uh, robotics. We can say that the, uh, the Arduino, why it became so popular, and Arduino, why this microcontroller is gaining so much popularity in the market. And then we will do a hands on practice on Tinkercad. As Tinkercad is uh, and this, due to this lockdown, and if Tinkercad is a very good platform, you can do online simulation. What is simulation? We will make you understand every each and every detail of that. And then at the end, we will close our webinar. Uh, and also, I want to mention you that at the end of the webinar, you'll be giving a feedback form. So don't forget to fill up that. Now, we'll see the, see the brief overview of techno mechanics. So techno mechanics was incorporated by some patient demonstrators who are willing to contribute in the society. We have an extensive team of research engineers who are, uh, who are willing to contribute in the society. And they, are, they will be soon launching our product in the upcoming next two, two to three months. And if you see our list of services, then our list of services include giving technical trainings in schools, colleges, engineering colleges, polytechnic, etc. And also, uh, we provide lab setup, uh, lab setup, in, and you can visit our website if you want to know more about technomechanics at www.technomechanics.com. Now, I'd like to hand over the mic to Anup Sharma. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Pardip, for your excellent presentation. So hello everyone, this is Anup. So I will give you the brief overview of robotics or Arduino and we will do some of the hands on things. So yes, let us move to the robotics. Robotics sound cool, right? Yes, it is cool. Not because of its name, but because of the work we do here, the thing we make. What's come to your mind when you hear the word robot? Some of you may have misconcept of a big machine to be considered as a robot. Right, which we see in the movie, like that Rajinikanth movie, there is having a robot known as Chicky, or maybe the Transformer. I think there are lots of movies in this, right? But it's wrong. The simplest definition of robot is any matter that has at least one degree of freedom, and a robot which can take the shape of human are called humanoid. Now, what is robotics? Robotics is the study of robot, making of robot, and playing with them. Why do we think? Robotics, robot make our tasks easy. They, what they can do, why it is needed? Because they can do the repetitive tasks without getting bored. They don't need rest. They never get sick. The best part which I love about robot is that they never complain. Now, moving on to the fundamental block of robot, it consists of a mechanical system, power supply system, sensors, signal processing system, and control system. Now we will see one by one each of the system. Mechanical system comprise of the chassis, wheel, and their placement. This system decides the locomotive of the robot. By this, we can move our robot in any direction. We device which convert electrical energy into such device is called actuator. And the most popular actuator in the market is known as DC motor, which is widely used for the locomotion of a robot. Now, for the robot to work properly, we need power supply, which act as a food, right? Like how, how we eat food to give us the energy. In the same way, we need to give the power supply to the robot. So in robotics, we give DC power supply, which is provided by the battery. The next part is the most interesting and the fascinating thing that you will ever get to know about the robot. You know, right? We human have independent to an extent because of our senses. Then for the robot to be independent, what will we need? But totally independent or autonomous, I mean the robot should work on its own without any human interface. Most of you will agree that uh, need of intelligence and the intelligence is imparted by the human, right? It's not enough. Well, of course, <clears throat> the robot will work but that will be totally isolated from the outside world. For this interactive, the Im we implant the sensor in the robot. So what is a sensor? A sensor is a device which is capable of sensing physical parameters like temperature, pressure, heat, magnetic field, radio waves, IR wave, etc. okay, that accents the process. 
now the data from the sensors and allow the electrical and digital signal need to be processed so that the robot can analyze the situation right if we fabricate the or implant the sensor into then we need some device which will analyze this data the signal coming from this sensors for this we use signal processing system and make its move to be introduced as an electronic component to process the signal right so yes control system is the major part of robot if that is present inside the robot and the function can be represented in a form of control system based on controller classified as manual semi autonomous autonomous and manual and wired wireless autonomous and free program and self program robot so free program the example can be given as a line following robot i think some of you have made such kind of robot right so it is a free program robot we just give him the input that we want uh, the uh, if if something like the ir rays get back to the receiver then we need to move into one black line or something like this right so this is what known as free program now then there is one more known as self learning robot which i think you all have also made that uh, math solving robot using ultrasonic sensor right so it has its own it can like learn from the environment if it is in a obstacle or not and then it can move into any direction so this was the brief introduction about robotics now we will see the famous three law given by isaac asimov of robotics okay the first law is state that a robot may not injure any human being so in action allow a human being to come to harm this means that uh, suppose if you are using robot in a war to harm your opponent then will not consider as a robot instead you can use that robot to carry the weapon with you or to detect the mines okay so that it can go in the front end and it can defuse a mine so that it will save the line life of the soldiers and also for the surveillance purpose right so this what the first law says and the second law says that a robot must obey order given by its human except where first such law would conflict with the uh, with the first law so this means that the robot must obey the order given him in the in suppose in in in, in war or sometime suppose whatever the uh, like uh, instruction is given to him by by the human he need to follow that but it should not conflict the first law if someone is giving him the order to harm someone then it should not do this okay and the third law is state that a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict the first and second law this means that suppose if you are using a robot which extinguishes the fire okay which goes inside the building and uh, put water into it or use the fire extinguisher to extinguish the fire okay suppose if you send one robot into a building and it it has extinguished the fire it has done its work now you have not programmed it in a such a way that it should able to come back so in that case we will not consider it as a robot to be a proper robot you need to program it in a such a way that once it go inside it should be also able to come back from that area so that's all all about the robotics part now let's move to the arduino arduino so arduino is an open source prototyping platform based on the easy of use of hardware and software okay so on arduino you can we make lots of stuff okay we will see now one by one about the arduino and i think some of you have also used this arduino in uh, various project right so let's come to the discuss the history part of the arduino so this is the man who is behind the arduino his name is messimo benzi okay he is a co-founder and cto of this arduino project so he started this project in 2005 uh in the institute in italy so his aim was to provide the low cost easy way to program any microcontroller in which we can implant sensors and do lots of stuff okay so it was basically created for kid but after that when it's get into the market it de demand has been significantly increased and nowadays it has been used by everyone okay so uh, yes so now the interesting part here that when uh, the messimo uh, benzin has uh, uh, is Uh, released his Arduino and in the in the initial first year he was only able to sell the two piece of the Arduino. Okay, so uh, but now you can see right it has become quite popular. Everyone is using Arduino in their project and all. Okay, maybe in the, even the industries are also using Arduino for in in the prototyping stage. So this means that we should not lose hope at whatever we are doing. This man has done the same thing 
and now you can see it's, it is such a great project now let us discuss why should i use odino right there are lots of microcontrollers available in the market even if, even if you can just search microcontroller in the google then you will get there are some from the taxes instrument okay microchip there are lots of companies and they make very very various type of microcontroller so why we use odino because it is cheap okay and it's come with an open supply hardware feature that permit user to develop their own kit suppose if you have breadboard and all these component then you can make the same Arduino at your home, okay? So that's the best part of Arduino. The Arduino IDE is well suitable for the systems like Windows, Linux, and uh, Macintosh. So we will discuss about what is Arduino IDE and all this thing in the upcoming slide, okay? And the best one more base part is it is compatible with IoT. Suppose if you use the Ethernet seal or ESP826 with this Arduino, then you can uh, use it as an IoT device like you can use this to control the applications in your home like turn on the light turn on the pen you can just do all such kind of stuff good choice to start with robotics as you know like as you can see in this screen right, there are lots of pins available in Arduino so it's become easy for us to implant the sensors and again we, we can implant the motors and all these things so we can do various robotics project with the help of Arduino portable Okay, it is portable handy. You can get this in the credit card size. Okay, the, the Arduino Uno and other the mini is much smaller than this also. So low power consumption, simple and user friendly programming language. So now we will discuss some feature of the Arduino. I think the most popular among all the Arduino is the Arduino Uno. Okay, so we will discuss some of its features. So it has a microcontroller 80 mega 328, which you can see right this black color chip, this big one. So this is the microcontroller 80 mega 328 and it is an operating voltage of i volt which we usually give through the usb uh, from our uh, laptop usb port or from our mobile chargers and all these things and it has a 14 digital input and output pins the analog it has six analog input pins okay so which help us to connect the mo motors and work with pwms and also so you will come to know about this if you uh, enroll for the advanced course of Arduino. Like how to work on PWM wave and all these things. Then it is a clock speed of 16 megahertz. Okay, this is the crystal oscillator here. You can see on the screen this uh, crystal oscillator, and it is a SRAM of 2, 2 KB and a flash memory of 32 KB. So now let us discuss about the programming environment. Okay, so suppose if you buy Arduino, then you need to program the Arduino. You need an integrated development environment. Okay, for this. We have a Arduino IDE, so which you can see on the screen. For today demonstration, we will not use this IDE, but you must have the knowledge of this IDE. Okay, so you can see on the screen, it's clearly shown there. So now let's come back. Why we use this IDE? Right, it is inexpensive. This you will get this free of cost, and it's, it is it work well in the cross platform. Like you 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 get the version for its Linux, machine tools, and Windows. Okay, simple and clear programming. So what programming we usually do here is the embedded C. Or C++ so like anyone who is the beginner uh, in this programming and all they can also do lots of stuff with Arduino open source and extensive library okay I love this part of the Arduino very much is that it has a various library you will found on the internet okay? so it will make your tasks easier so that you can uh, really focus on your product or your main goal okay rather than too much putting your time on programming so this is the best part of Arduino so now let us discuss some of the application of the Arduino. So in the first image, you can see one man is holding some gun-like structure, right? So this is what we made here at uh, uh, Techno Mechanics. So this is an IR contactless sensor. Okay, you can make a, a home automation project, a radar. Pro see, radar project is very quite famous in kids section, right? Kids used to make this project using ultrasonic sensor. You can make line following robot, uh, LPG gas detector. detector which you can use really and contribute to the society and all so this was about the application part of Arduino. so uh, guys we have completed the theoretical session of our today uh, agenda so now let's move to the thinkercade so what you need to do you need to go to the thinkercade.com okay t-i-n-k-e-r-c-a-d.com and then you need to log in okay i have already logged in so after login you will Redial into this dashboard page. Okay, so when you are in this dashboard dashboard page, then you need to go to the circuit. Okay, 
just below 3D design, there is something you can circuit. Okay, so you need to click here. Once you click on the circuit, you can see here it is written create new circuit. Okay, so you need to click here create new circuit. Okay, so when you click on click on create new circuit, then it will drive you to the main page where we will do the practical session or where we will do the simulation part of our today agenda. Okay, so this is where we will do the today simulation. Okay. Here we can do everything here you can see there are lots of components and all so what we will do we will search here first ordino a r d u i n okay so once you search ordino you can see you can get this uno board here right so you then you just just click on this board and try to drag it to the simulator page okay this is where you need to drag and drop this ordino after that we will search breadboard Yes. So after that, uh, what we will search a breadboard. Just search at DRA. Then you will get this breadboard. Okay. So uh, we use the breadboard to integrate all the circuits. So it is used for the convenience because here you can place all the component and all these things. Okay. So this is the breadboard. In breadboard, what happened? These lines are connected, okay. Internally, they are connected, and these lines are connected uh, uh, horizontally, and these are connected vertically, okay. And now we will see the use of this. After that, what we will do, we will search your LED, okay. And if you search on the LED, or you can directly get it from here. So, what I will do, I will try to take this LED and put it anywhere in the breadboard. You can put this, okay. So, I'm placing it here, okay. Once you place the LED, now you, you can connect it with the Arduino, okay. So what I will do, I will connect this cathode terminal of this battery into the negative terminal of this breadboard. Okay? And then what I will do, again, I will connect the negative terminal from the breadboard into the ground of the Arduino. Then for the ease of power, we will just change its color to black. Okay? Because you know, right, our ground is always black. So once we have done this, now we will connect one wire from anode to the 13 number pin of Arduino. Okay? you can put any color so this is what we have done this is a small circuit what we have made using code you know now what you need to do you need to click on code here so once you click on code you can see this is screen then you can see here it is written as block okay so you need to click on this drop down menu then you will see here block block plus text and text okay so you need to click on text okay then it will ask for are you sure then just click on continue Okay, so once you continue, then you can see this code here, right? So this is a code which is uh, used to blink this LED. Okay, so now I will explain you line by line what this code means. So here, what is it in void setup? So this means that whatever the function is inside this void setup, it will only run for once. Okay, whatever inside the void setup, it will, this code will only run for once. Okay? So what we have written here, pin mode 13 output. So pin mode means we want to configure the pin. So we are saying here that we want the third pin number pin as an output or we want the output from the 13 number pin we have configured this now let's move to the void loop so what happened in void loop is that the program will run again and again it will be in a loop okay whatever you write inside the void loop it will run again and again then what we do we write here digital write okay 13 number pin is high so we are saying that we want to write the digital pin 13 as a high then again we have given here the command that it will be then it will be delay for thousand milliseconds that is equal to one second okay so it will be a uh, delay for thousand milliseconds okay after that again we have given a command digital write 30 number pin low this means that the p the uh, 30 number pin will be low for low and again we have given here delay for thousand milliseconds for thousand milliseconds now i think you are a bit confused about this high and low right so this signifies that high means that you are saying Arduino that you just give output from here. So what happens if Arduino gives some voltage from here, then the circuit will be completed, then the LED will glow. And it will glow for 1000 milliseconds. Again, then it, we have given a command, it should be low. Means there will be no supply will be passed through this pin, then it will be low. And again, it will happen for 1000 milliseconds. Okay? So this is the coding part we have done. Now what we will do, we will click on start simulation and we will see how it Look like.
So once we click start simulation, now you can see the simulation time has been started and you can see the LED is blinking, right? See, this is what we have done from the coding and using Arduino. So guys, if you have this Arduino board, breadboard and LED, then you can do it at your home, okay? Uh, in, 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 a, in a hardware also. Yeah, that's all about the first simulation that what we did here. Now, what we will do, we will click on stop simulation. After clicking on stop simulation, now we will again click on this code. Okay. After that, what I will do, I will again select on LED from here and I will connect it anywhere in this grid. Okay. I have just connected it here. Now I can change the color of the LED also here. So I will change it to the yellow. Okay. Let's make something interesting out of it, right? Because uh, only blinking LED will not work right here. Yeah. So now I will change it color into black. Okay. Because this is the ground. So you can see what how easy it will be for us if you make uh, if you use a breadboard for making such kind of prototype project right you will see you can directly connect the ground terminal to this pin and this pin is entirely connected into this uh, Arduino ground so uh, you will get the ground signal over here also now what I will do I will again the connect the anode pin of this LED into the dual number pin okay and I will change this color into anything okay you can change it to anything Okay, done. This part is also done. We have connected the second LED also. Now we will take one more LED from here and we will paste it anywhere you can paste it on the breadboard. Okay, then I will do the same step. I will connect the ground to the ground of the breadboard. Okay, part is done. And then I can again, I will connect the anode pin of this LED into, you can see, you can, you can connect it to the any pin of this Arduino. For today, I am using the 11 number pin. Okay. So see, I have connected this to the 11 number pin of 14. Okay. So and uh, one more thing, guys. When you make such kind of circuit, make it in a uh, like proper manner. Like whatever I have done here, it's kind of look messy. But I don't recommend you to do in this way. Just uh, make it properly. It should look beautiful also, right? Because when some other person will see, then they must understand like whatever you are doing or what is the circuit connection. Okay. So I also recommend you to do to make it neat and clear. So what we did, we have connected the anode terminal of 12 uh, of the uh, yellow led into the 12 number pin and uh, this we can see we will change this color of this led into green color okay so, I have done this. so again we have uh, connected the anode terminal of this green color in the 11 number pin now what we need to do and we will click on code now what we need to make we need to make a traffic light okay so suppose someone is given us a problem statement that you want to you need to make traffic light in which suppose this light will if suppose the red light will be turned on then the both light should be off and if was sub, suppose the yellow light will turn on then the other two should be off okay so now what we will do we will come to we will see the coding part okay just focus here so in, in coding we have written void setup and we have written the pin mode 13 as output so i will just copy this okay i will just copy this one and i will paste it twice here okay then I will just change the pin number here. Okay, I will change it into the 12 and 11. Now, why 12 and 11? Because we have connected this other LED into the 12 and 11 number pin of ODD. So, this means what we are saying we want the output from these three pins now. Okay, so now our void setup part is done. Now, let's jump to the void loop. Okay, here what we will do here we have written digital pin, digital write 13 high, right? We want the 13 to be high. Now, what I will do, I will copy this code and i will paste it twice here okay and again i will change the pin number into 12 and 11. then what i will do i want that when the 13 number pin is high the both pins should be low right so i will make this as a low low means it should not be low okay low means zero in computer science so i have done the first part okay now the second part now what will happen the 13 number pin will be high then again both the pin will be low and it will delay for thousand milliseconds now again we will copy this code okay and then what we will do we will paste it twice here and again we will change the pin number okay now what we want we want the yellow color led to be high and both other to be low right oh sorry uh, yes yes I, i'm correct so what i will do i need the 13 number pin to be low but 12 number pin as a high okay and 11 number pin as a low so we have completed the second part also now what I will do, I will copy this four line of code. Okay. 
and then I will paste it again here. Because we need to also configure for the green color LED, right? So what I will do again here, I want this both the pin to be low, 13 number and 12 number pin of this Arduino and 11 number pin as a high. I have done this. And again, I have given a command of delay of 1000 seconds. Now let's see how it's look like, okay, in, in simulation. Okay, we act, now we will need to click on start simulation. So you can see the three LEDs are blinking, right? Just like traffic light. So guys, with the help of this, you can make lots of projects, right? In Diwali also we have seen, uh, we, we use this light in our house, right? So same principle is used there also, okay? Just the principle of this blinking. You can make lots of other stuff, lots of projects with this blinking tutorial help. And there are other advanced projects also you can do with the help of audio. So you can see the LEDs blinking, right? according to the program we have given. Now what I will do, I will again click on the stop simulation. And suppose if I will change the delay of this uh, red, uh, red LED into five, then let's see what happened, okay? I have changed it to the 5,000 millisecond, okay? Let's see what happened. See, now the red LED is going for a little bit longer time, right? It's taking five seconds. And now it's going fast. So yeah, so that's all. So now I want to uh, ask you one question, okay? Like, uh, like I want to show you something. Like, see, we have written here pin mode, okay? So what, what will happen? Can anyone see me if I just change this M into the small letter M, and then I will start the simulation. So uh, some of you may think that it will run, or some of you may think that it will not run. Uh, but what I think it will not run because that is, we will see, okay? What, what happens? Then I will explain. See, it is saying that in function void setup error, okay? So this shows error because pin mode, this was not declared in a scope because like when the programmer have written this code, you know, part, then they have not set it as a small m, okay? They have set it as a capital M, that's why. So this is where I want to draw your attention that whenever you do programming, then you must be very precise, okay? Uh, in the coding part, because if you make a small mistake in the coding, then the entire your program will not run. It will show an error. Even if you uh, miss the semicolon, then also your program will not run. So guys, thank you very much for uh, attending this session. Okay, so we have recorded this session uh, uh, afterward because uh, on that day we have we have we have faced some issues. So thank you very much for joining. I think everything is clear to you. If you have any doubt, then you can contact us. So you can uh, also visit our website. It is uh, tech www technomechanics.com we have various services here okay you can uh, go to ignite your idea page and you, if you have some idea then you can share with me and you can start building prototype we'll uh, give you the support like lab and everything and uh, also in uh, career section we are having uh, openings for internship okay we provide internship to the students okay so if you are looking for internship then you can come here and you can see which are the positions available right now and then you can apply here okay and uh, also we have a blog section so suppose if you are good in writing technical blog and all these things then you can come to our blog section and you can read all those blog and also you, if you want to contribute then you can uh, ask us then we, we will post your blog into our site also now uh, as a part of our webinar series we are hosting different webinar so this webinars is already completed robotics and audio coding and we are having other webinars on the way so uh, thank you very much for joining.